So after we got about six or seven inches of snow the other day, I dug the sled out and jumped on it for the first ride of the season and I got, well, a bit of a sinking feeling. So essentially what just happened there is when I put my weight on the back of the sled, the rear spring is compressed pretty much all the way and that's not good. I want to be able to take this thing over some nasty terrain. I want to be able to hit jumps with it. So completely bottoming it just by sitting on it is obviously not going to fly and it means there's an issue back here. So most sleds are going to have a spring shock combo up at the front here. And in the back you've got kind of this goofy long bar that actually attaches to some coil springs that are coiled around that bar right there. And in the center of that you've got another shock just kind of hanging out by itself there. Now it doesn't really matter what type of vehicle you're talking about, the spring essentially kind of keeps you up in the position that you need to be. That's why you kind of adjust that for your weight, kind of sets the ride height. However, that spring doesn't do anything for you other than kind of keep you at that position or return you there after you've been bounced around. And to keep you from bouncing around wildly, you need that shock absorber there to kind of slow the compression and rebound. And that's essentially what we've lost here and why my sled wants to bottom just by me sitting on it. So if shock is doing its job, it should slow the compression and the rebound of a spring like this. And if it's not doing its job, it's gonna look like this. So the same thing actually happened to me when I was out riding my Polaris Dragon. This I think must have Kind of been getting bad at the end of the year last year and I just didn't notice it and then over the summer it leaked. Let's figure out how to get that off of there. Oh yeah, I suppose the back's just gotta be higher, doesn't it? This thing is in pretty rough shape. This is just riding on metal down here. I don't know what material that bushing was supposed to be made out of, but apparently it degraded and fell out of there. We're missing some bushing material in here, so that's just riding on metal there. This one's not much better. Still really no idea how I'm gonna get this off of here. I don't know if you actually have to undo the spring. I think I'm gonna end up just pulling these bolts out of here, and then I think this whole wheel will come out. Was exciting. I worked the bolt out of here and all at once this flipped around like that. Uh, these popped out of the little slides that they're in here and uh, I just about my pants. <laughs> uh, probably should be wearing some safety glasses when I'm doing this. But also probably help to know what I'm doing here but of course I don't. I guess that makes things interesting, right? This is where a manual would have really come in handy, but my guess is these probably should have been relieved of their tension prior to undoing that bolt. Uh, my guess would be uh, you could probably just take these bolts off um, and you'd probably need two people to kind of hold tension on these. I mean, they they have tension on them, but obviously it's not, not all that much. As for my bolt up here, I think maybe with the tension relieved, I can just pull that out. So this shock is Definitely cooked. Uh, I think I just lost a piece of pushing. Pieces falling everywhere. Uh, looks like my bushing is pretty well shot. So that'll need to be replaced. Get this thing pulled out and I'm not really sure if this is gonna be savable or not. If these get too egged out, which I think this is probably gonna be, uh, you really shouldn't be using them. So might need to be re replacing that one entirely. I guess we'll see. Looks like this back part has 
and those goofy little locking washers on it, along with the nut. That's yeah, definitely gonna get some grease on the way back in. So what do we have here? Ooh. You know, I cracked something hard, and I suppose this is probably something that happened over time, but <laughs> I think it was in the UP, I do remember hitting something that felt like a, a rock right at the front of the skid, and I wonder if that's what that irregularity is. I think they might be able to save the rest of the shock, actually, and just replace that piece, because that does get removed, so I guess we'll see what they say. <laughs> that will also need to be replaced. That is my non-expert opinion. <laughs> Holy shit. Oh, uh, I guess this, oh yeah, that wasn't a good idea. Uh, whatever, not like it matters. That's why you don't buy a sled that has 10,000 miles on it. Boy, this thing has seen better days. The, uh, the square up towards the top that was actually machined into the plastic is where those spring rails are supposed to be sliding. However, they've apparently worn their way all the way down so they were actually rubbing on the washer that holds that piece on. So I hate to say it, but I think this is probably enough for one video anyways. That way I'll be able to put this out shortly after filming it anyway. Um, not really sure what we're gonna do here, I guess. I've been wanting a new sled. I bought a new bike this year after buying a new bike last year. I actually bought two new bikes this year. One brand new, one used. I got a lot of money into motorcycles. I don't really think I want to spend 10 grand more on a sled, but mm, I think the trails are going to open pretty soon. I guess we'll see how fast I can get this put back together. Take care, stay safe, stay swanky. If you want to see the rest of uh, the F1100 saga, make sure you hit that subscribe button, click the bell after you subscribe, so let's you know anytime I put a video out. If I ever get this sled or another sled back out of the trail, I will be putting out a video every weekend. Thanks for watching, guys. Take care. Stay safe. Stay swanky. Get out. Enjoy this beautiful world if you can. And hey, if you can't, here's some more videos to check out in the meantime.